All right, boys and girls, we're back here with another episode on our Subaru, and today I'm gonna be tackling a little how-to installation. I'm gonna go ahead and actually pull down the headliner in this car today because I wanna show you guys how to suede wrap your headliner. It's actually a really simple thing to do, especially in our car, it doesn't have a sunroof. Sunroof cars add a little bit more complexity to the job as it did in my RX-7, but it is totally doable in your shop or in your garage at home. And what I like about doing these suede wrap headliners, you can either use Alcantara, which is pretty expensive, or you can use actual suede. And I'll show you guys the material in a minute. What's cool is it updates the interior of the car quite a bit, and if you use the actual suede version, it gives that new kind of car smell inside once you're completed. So we went ahead and ordered this headliner material from our friends over at SOS Customs. Here's the material. We did go ahead and order three yards of this, and it is a suede material. It's already backed with foam. Uh, as you can see here, this is the foam layer and the suede starts here. It's definitely wide enough to fit the car. It's actually wider than the car. And as far as tools needed to do this job, you don't need much. You might need a panel popper and I think you're gonna need a Phillips head screwdriver. I will let you guys know once I'm doing the job. All right, I'm gonna have a go at this with a Phillips head screwdriver. The sun visors here, they have a clip here and I believe that that is gonna pop off just by prying. But on this side, I do see two screws. sun visor is off and now we're gonna move on to the grab handles which are up here in the corners actually pretty easy as well I've already popped off the front one just got a little pry tool uh, you pop the cover off that looks like this and you've got two screws and uh, that's step two done so we got to move on to the other side All right, well, I forgot this car was a four-door, and that means there's two more O handles in the back. So, I'm gonna jump in the back seat and uh, pop these ones off as well. All four handles have been removed. Now we need to focus our efforts on the dome light and then the uh, map light up here. Okay, well that was easy. Now that we've got everything that's holding this up uh, externally, it's time to remove the A pillar, the B pillar, and the C pillar. figure out how to get the C pillar. Looks like this is all pretty much ready to come down, which is good. Okay, that should give us clearance we need to get the headliner out. All right, so you guys probably just heard those pops. I just went ahead and released this panel here. Ah, so I was running into some trouble. It was seeming like it was still pretty snug in here, and I found one fastener that I missed. I didn't see it, and it's right here. It's in there pretty good. I'm gonna probably need both hands for this one. That's what she said. Yeah. All right. All right, now we're loose. I'm gonna go ahead. I started to free up the door moldings just at the top where it pinches the headliner in. I didn't do this side yet, so we'll go ahead and just sort of pop those out so they're loose here and here. Our headliner is free now. So one thing I've learned in the past is uh, you wanna be pretty delicate with this because it's a foam back material, but it has a uh, sort of like a cardboard material that makes it stiff. And if you bend it too much, you'll actually crease that. Getting the creases out of the bent cardboard 
cardboard piece is really difficult and you could ruin the headliner. So you wanna bring it out as easily as possible. Now we have a hatchback, so I'm thinking that probably the best way to pull this out is just straight back out through the hatch this way. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and give that a shot. guys it took about five minutes to get out of the car once I got everything freed up one thing I will say is that this is a modern car and so that means there's modern technology and that's something I wasn't counting on being was wiring that's mounted to the back of the headliner there's also some plastic fixtures here to keep the gapping between the, the metal roof and the, the uh, headliner and so basically what you have to do is at each a pillar there's a connector you'll want to undo the connector at each side uh, and undo the wiring from the pillar. And then there's also one on the driver's side rear that you can undo as well. Once you undo those three connectors and undo the wiring from the A pillars, this just pulls right out. Um, and again, we have a hatch, so it comes out the back. All right, so this is a newer type headliner that's actually a molded carpet. So it's hardened. The type that I've ever reupholstered have always been older 90s Japanese cars. And it's usually like a cardboard backed uh, with a foam and carpet um, laminate basically on it. So this one's gonna require a little bit different prep. Um, I've spoken to the guys over at SOS Customs who do a lot of our interior work, and shout out to them. Um, they did tell me that I'll want to just lay right over top of this molded plastic headliner, and then wrap all the seams around the edges and tuck everything into any of the holes. All right, so I went ahead and measured out our six feet. Uh, we only need 48 inches in width, but this thing gives us 60, so it's well oversized. Uh, I measured our six feet in length that we need for the front to back. This is our six foot mark right here, and I went ahead and went another like three or four inches just so we have a little bit of play. Um, again, this is not enough material to do two headliners, so I can only cut once. If I screw up, it's game over, and I gotta spend a lot more money and wait a few more days to get more materials. So. I uh, want to make sure I measure twice and cut once and do this right straight out of the gate. Alright, so we're using headliner adhesive from 3M to do this job. You're probably going to want to pick up at least two cans of this. Just to be safe, you should probably only need one, but it's always good to have a spare. One thing I noticed is if I hold the spray can about four to eight inches away from the material, I get a much better spray pattern than further away. It gets smaller the further away you get, obviously. Um, I'm gonna let this go ahead and cure just for a couple minutes here, and I'm gonna go ahead and actually start laying it down. You gotta let the, the glue sort of start drying, and then it'll stick together really well. All right guys, so it's really not rocket science. Once you put the glue on, just work your way left to right, left to right, and work the, uh, the material into the recessed areas that you need to tuck it into. Um, if you've ever laid vinyl or anything like that, it's a similar process. As you can see, I've got it to take shape real nice. Uh, looks like I got some fingerprints over there, but yeah. Um, that's the cool thing about suede is you can leave these cool patterns and stuff, but as you can see here, I got it nice and tucked into the handle area. Um, so that when we put our handles back in, they have the recessed pocket for that. Um, and we've got enough material down here to overlap at the back once we're done. We'll uh, cut this about an inch back and fold it under. But it's taking shape real nicely. Now we'll move on to the front. So we'll take note of any recessed areas that we'll need to address. There's one here, so we'll put a little extra glue, about 20% more glue in those areas. And then this area here is probably gonna be a little problematic. Um, 
So we'll work our way forward to that and then we'll tuck everything in and try to make sure we don't get any uh, finger bubbles in this area here. And that's where the material is gonna wanna kinda bunch up. I call them finger bubbles because they look like fingers. The other spot's probably gonna be an issue is right there uh, in these corners where the, uh, the headliner takes a big deep curve here and then also it's curving this way. So this area is probably gonna be a little difficult as well. But that'll be the last thing we're gonna hit, so we'll work our way from the center forward and uh, make sure that we lay this thing out nice and flat. Now that you've got the majority of the headliner laid on, I'm really happy with the way this is taking shape. It has a little bit of flexibility to it, so it's really nice, but there are some areas where it wants to do that finger bubbling. Um, I was able to get this all down uh, without any of that, which was really nice. Uh, you can see where I've pressed it in. Uh, using the piece of remnant to push down is a really good idea. It leaves a nice smooth surface uh, on the suede when you're done, instead of all the oil and greases from your hands. I was able to get this to tuck in real nice here. Um, and hopefully that'll stay. You wanna go back and look and see if there's any areas where you missed with glue. I missed the foam backing here. So I went ahead and pulled that back to spray a little glue on here, let that dry from it, and we can wrap that over and seal that edge. I also need to put a little bit here too. I, I got glue on the headliner, but not on the foam. So I gotta stick some there. Once I get that done, we'll finish the top side. So we'll move on to the back and uh, the folding. So when you start wrapping the materials, you're gonna have to put some cuts in it to get it to wrap around some corner stuff. So I recommend having a razor knife on hand and relief cut at your corners so that you can uh, fold this over properly without it pulling from uh, different areas. It's gonna create a really difficult time for you. You're gonna have a bad time. If you don't, uh, so I recommend just finding the corner and give it a nice slice and then go ahead and start folding your material over so I'm going to trace around 360 degrees. This is how you want the ends to turn out. Just fold it over and glued. That way when you put the headliner back in and you seal everything up, uh, it's basically forcing the headliner to hold. It's not going to let loose uh, due to the uh, pressure from the interior panels pushing up on it. I went ahead and just did the finishing touches on all of the holes. So you'll want to pre-cut these before you put it back in. Uh, I'll go ahead and relief cut all the corners and then fold it over. Just spray a little bit of glue on there or before you make your cuts. Cut out all the hand holders, wrap the back, and this bad boy is ready to go back in. I did notice there's an interesting mark on the inside of our headliner here. And it looks like it's from heat because it's black. Um, but after further inspection, I realized it's because that's where our antenna is at. And the body shop actually removed the antenna. So that is actually black paint from our roof. And it looks like polishing compound on there. Uh, that's good because anytime there's a fire inside the car, it's not a good thing. So anytime you see like a, a heat mark like that, it's kind of concerning, but but thank God for us, that wasn't a heat mark, it's just paint. So now I can go ahead and put this thing back together. I'm gonna start by putting the rear plastic piece back on that goes up here. Start putting this thing back together, boys. All right, once you've refitted the headliner back up in the car, it'll be helpful if you put the rear seats down. Uh, I already popped mine back up, and I already went ahead and installed the top uh, fasteners up here in the back and got the C-pillars already back in place. Um, but basically, the process is just backwards of how you took it out. Just follow it, retrace your steps, and put everything back together the way it came out. And uh, then you can sit back and admire your work, maybe even drink a beer. I plan on drinking a beer.
All right, guys. So far, so good. It's got uh, all the the passenger handles in, all the covers back on. Headliner is looking nice. We just got to uh, button up the dome light, the map light. I got one visor on. Uh, I need to put the stay in for the for the visor, and I can move on to the driver's side. We're almost there. Looking good. Got our handles in. Dome light. Handles. Gotta do this one yet. Reverse order. Pop everything back together. And it's gotta look beautiful. I can't wait to see it done. All right, well, I'm just firing on the last uh, screw cover here in the A-pillar. This job is complete. So there you have it. There's our uh, suede headliner. I think it looks pretty dope. It's a really nice, uh, nice feel to it. Adds a nice fresh smell to the car, like a new car smell. Kind of like it. Um, this is a quick and easy thing you can do. Time elapsed for this whole project is probably about two hours, two and a half hours. It's pretty straightforward. So. Uh, if you guys have any questions, please leave them in the comment section down below and uh, we'll address them as we can. And uh, yeah, here's some new headliners and all the old cars around. Freshen them up, boys and girls. Thank you guys so much for watching. We hope you enjoyed this how-to. We're going to keep doing more of these, so if you have any suggestions on any other how-tos that you would like to see done, leave them in the comment section down below. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button, guys. Turn on those notifications. Leave us some comments. We appreciate it all. We'll see you guys in the next one.